Thought you'd never hear from me again, huh? Honestly, I never thought I would have to tell you guys any more of my crappy life. Your good friend Travis is still cursed by the voodoo curse placed upon me by my old boss King Creel. I still look like a living puppet, although at the very least I'm no longer under the control of the strings. So at least I got that going for me. I also still live with Alexandra and Olivia. Olivia treats me like an older brother which is nice, but Alexandra is still cautious of me. Which I guess is a good segue into talking about the elephant in the room. Yes, I still have my blackouts and yes I still murder people. Despite anything I try to stop it, I always end up murdering some poor idiot that ends up coming into contact with me. I've still not been able to sleep and to say my mental state is in tatters is an understatement. The only good thing about my life is that King Creel is gone forever. But of course, nothing in this train wreck of my life ever stays the same. The flyer for the grand reopening of the half-priced voodoo shop truly rattled me and caused me to go to the side of the old voodoo shop to see if it indeed was reopening. And to see if King Creel had found a way to crawl his way out of hell and back into his shop. Suiting back up into my hoodie and leaving my room for the first time in weeks I ran right into Alexandra. Oh, Travis. She said obviously startled and afraid that I was going to hurt her in some way. I looked at her with my button eyes and then looked away from her. I'm going out. I'll be back soon. I said, pulling my hood on and walking past her, only for her to grab me by the arm and pull me back. I looked over at her with a bit of annoyance, but also understanding that she was worried about me and the fact that my blackouts are becoming much more frequent. Don't go back there Travis. She pleaded with me. Her eyes wide and seemingly about to burst out into tears at any second. Alexandra had been like a mother to me since I had murdered my own mother and father. But she was terrified of me whenever the idea of the voodoo shop was brought up. Or when I returned late at night from one of my blackouts. It's just going to be a quick trip. I need to see if this is true. I ate, reaching into my pocket and pulling out the flyer. Handing it to her and waiting for her to read it through. She looked up at me with a worried look and carefully handed the paper back to me. Moving out of the way of me as I continued on. Please. Just be careful. She told me, holding her fists in her chest as I walked down the stairs towards the front door. Heading out of the house I pulled my hood back on and continued on my way down to the shady side of town where the voodoo shop had been located. Since my final showdown with King Creole in the cemetery this part of town had gone to hell quicker than I could snap my fingers. It seems he was the only thing keeping that part of town from truly turning into the rotting dump it is today. Most of the buildings are condemned and slated for destruction. Seems if you pull out the heart the rest of the area just shrivels up and dies. Barely anyone visits this side of town, not even the junkies or homeless go here anymore. Seeing all this brought some joy to my heart. The fact that it was still dying made me optimistic that Creole was dead and buried once and for all. Until I rounded the corner and saw the imposing side of the half-priced voodoo store. With a giant banner stating it's nearing grand reopening. My heart sank into the deepest pits as I stared at the building and the sign. Swallowing the bile building up in my throat I approached the building and pressed my face up into the glass door. The same old dusty counter and wall of voodoo dolls greeted me. Causing me to back up quickly and shiver uncontrollably as all the horrible memories of the time I spent trapped inside the horror store. Stumbling back I said nothing to myself as I staggered away and walked off in the direction of Alexandra's house. A million thoughts were flying through my head as I thought about how it could be possible that the store was having a reopening. When my phone started ringing I almost wanted to let it go to voicemail, but for whatever reason, I reached into my pocket and pulled it out. Staring at the unfamiliar number and wanting to hang up. But I breathed through my nose and answered it. Hello? I asked. My voice quivered a bit as I was still unsure of how to be feeling at that moment. And when that soft and smooth southern accent greeted me, I stopped in my tracks and froze like a deer caught in the headlights. Travis, my boy. Long time no see. I need a favor from you. King Creole asked cheerily from the other end. I clutched my phone tightly as I looked around in all directions to try and see if he was somewhere in the vicinity. If my skin wasn't already so pale I'm sure that I would have quickly become this pale when I heard his voice. How? I mumbled into the phone. Pushing my back up against a nearby wall and sliding down it as my body seemingly shut down from sheer terror and fear of him. I don't have time to tell you, silly boy. My goodness how I've missed your stupid voice. He chuckled happily. 
I ended the call abruptly and shoved the phone into my pocket. To say that I ran back to Alexandra's house is an understatement. I'm pretty sure I could rival Usain Bolt with how fucking fast I ran. Opening the door and slamming it behind me, I breathed hard as I slid down onto the floor and just sat there and shivered hard. Alexandra poked her head from the kitchen and walked over to me. Kneeling next to me and wrapping her arms around me. I wrapped my own arms around her and let out a haggard breath into her. It's alright, Travis. She said, helping me up to my feet and walking me over to the kitchen. Sitting me down and going to the kitchen to get me something to drink. Olivia meanwhile stared at me with her big soft eyes. I looked over at her and offered a pain smile. She giggled and went back to eating her lunch. Tempe was next to her and looked up at me. He had basically become the replacement doll for her after the whole mother doll drama. What did you see? Alexandra asked me, placing a glass of orange juice in front of me and taking a seat next to me. She wasn't very close to me. She gave me enough space, probably just afraid of me if I was about to black out. The store is back. A and he called me. I said to her, gripping the glass of Oj. My shaky hands lifted the glass up to my mouth, but I couldn't bring myself to take a sip, so I just set it back down on the table and just sat back in the chair. That's not possible, Travis. Alexandra said, taking my hand in her own. We saw him dragged to hell. It's not possible for him to be coming back. Not to mention that the flyer you showed me didn't even have anything on it. She told me. Putting a hand on my shoulder. But I just stared back at her in confusion and horror. What? Yes it does. I corrected her. Reaching into my hoodie pocket and pulling it out again. Straightening it out on the kitchen table and staring at the obvious flyer down on the table. See. Right there. I declared, smacking the table and startling Olivia and Tempe with the force of it. Travis. This is just a blank sheet of paper. She quickly told me, backing up in her chair away from me and holding her hands up defensively. There isn't anything on here. She told me, taking the flyer and lifting it up again. I stared at it, but it still plainly promoted the grand reopening of the half-priced voodoo store. Yeah that paper is just all white. Olivia piped up, setting her sandwich on her plate and staring at the piece of paper with squinting eyes. I stared at the two of them and looked back at the flyer. I rubbed my button eyes hard and rough and stared back at it. But it still advertised exactly what I had said it would. Silently I backed away from the kitchen and made my way upstairs. Rubbing my face hard and pulling at my hair as I stepped into my room and closed the door behind me. I sat down on my bed and tried to make sense of all this. I knew for a fact I wasn't blacking out. That was impossible since I could remember everything so clearly. When I black out it's more like a dream nightmare that you sort of remember but can't really see all the details very clearly. I could clearly remember seeing the flyer, seeing the store, and hearing his voice over the phone. What's happening to me? I asked myself as I curled up in bed and tried to get some semblance of calm over myself. Why, you're my get out of jail free card. A familiar soft and soothing voice told me. Causing me to shoot up and look around the room in terror. I spun around to see where in God's name his voice was coming from. Even reaching into my pocket to pull my phone out to see if he had somehow possessed my phone. But when I reached into my pocket I found nothing there. I looked down at my pants and patted both pockets in my back pocket to see where the hell my phone was. Looking around my room I soon found it on my nightstand. Hooked up to its charger. Where I had left it since last night. How? I mumbled to myself reaching out to get the item. I suddenly froze and looked over towards the mirror attached to my nightstand. And screamed bloody murder when I saw him looking back at me. He tipped his hat to me and sat on the bed in the mirror. Long time no see, Travis my boy. He chuckled happily, looking around my room with a hum. Nodding he looked over to me and smiled. I looked behind myself to see if he truly was behind me, but he wasn't. He was seemingly trapped in the mirror. This isn't happening. The lack of sleep is just getting to me. I tried to rationalize all this. I was hallucinating. I mean I haven't slept in god knows how long. Maybe this was all just my decaying mind. No this ain't no hallucination. Ain't no party trick neither, Travis. Creole chuckled, taking off his hat and brushing his hair at the same time I did it. I looked at my hand and then back at him in abject horror as we both mimicked each other's movements. See, turning you into my little puppet wasn't just for my own entertainment. He chuckled, a little chuckle coming up from my throat as well. 
causing me to quickly cover my mouth. He did the same, but he simply lowered his hands and I followed his lead, dropping my handstand staring at the reflection in the mirror. He smiled back at me, his stitched up mouth stretching long and his yellow teeth turning into those sharp teeth. You see son. You were back a plan. I didn't expect to have to use you so quickly. But since y'all caused this little mess I'm currently in, I suppose I have to use you. He chuckled, reaching into his coat pocket and pulling out the flyer that had caused this downward spiral. He held it up to me and smiled. You're not that bad of an artist. He said with a smile. I didn't make that. I shouted at him, looking behind me as Alexandra started knocking on my door. Ignoring her I stared back at the mirror and smashed my hands against it. Trying to smash that figure that haunts me into oblivion. Oh of course you didn't. I did. But your skills were very helpful. Hopefully, I'll be able to train you to play the piano. He chuckled, coming closer to the mirror and tapping on the glass in a mockery of my anger. Can't y'all see what's happening, Travis? You belong to me. You're my property and so I'm claiming you for myself. He chuckled, smashing his gloved fist against the mirror and shattered it himself. Stepping backward in terror I stared at him as he happily climbed out of the mirror and fixed his purple tie with a happy hum. He reached down and grabbed me by the collar and shoved me against the wall. Smiling wide as he brushed some of the glass shards came off of me. Be a good boy and put on your suit. He said with a cheery tone, tapping my cheek and shoving me towards the closet. No. You don't control me anymore. I screamed at him, shoving him back and turning to grab a pair of scissors from my desk, only to find that my hands were now clasping the doors to my closet and pulling it open. Looking around in complete confusion I tried to find where he had gone. The bastard was gone and nowhere to be seen. I looked down at my hands, confused as to why I was wearing gloves. Shaking my head hard I did my best to try and get some bearing as to what was happening. Yet in the time it took me to open my eyes again, I found myself buttoning up the suit I had been forced into wearing the entire time I had been his puppet. I tugged on the gloves I wore, completely out of my control. Soon I stood up and walked back over to the closet again and reached up into the closet shelf. Pulling out a box that I had never seen there before. I opened it up and pulled the top hat out. The top hat wasn't the same as Creole's. The band around it wasn't gold like King Creole's was. It was black. I lifted it up and placed it on my head and fixed it so it would be straight. Standing up with a wide smile, I walked over to the door where Alexandra was still banging. I opened it and stared at her as she backed away from me. Travis. What are you she began, but I didn't let her finish. Lord knows I'll have to deal with her and her betrayal later. After all, I do have so much work to do. That's right ladies and gentlemen. All King Creole is back.